Okay, I'd like you with a pencil to let's actively together read the definition. I'll read it out loud. You guys are reading it along with me in your head. A compound inequality is an inequality formed by joining what? Two. Two inequalities with the word and or the word or. I would like you to look down below and you will see we have and and we have or. But like a compound word, both of them are putting two inequalities together, just like a compound word puts two words together. The major difference is when we have a compound word, it is a single word after it's combined. You will see that some of these are a single line and some of these are two lines on the graph. That's going to be the difference between the ands and the ors. So pick up your pencil. And we are going to first graph x is greater than 2 to see an and inequality in action. As always, we're just going to do a real quick snapshot of a graph. x is greater than 2, so what number are we circling? 2. Okay, and the arrow is going to go to the right. 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 That's one inequality. Here's our second inequality. Right now they're standalones. It's down here where they become compound. So let's graph this. You guys have been doing this for a couple weeks now. X is less than or equal to five. So I'm just gonna graph four, five, six. I'm circling the five and is it gonna be filled in or empty? And the, and the line is gonna go to the... So those are not compound, those are just simple inequalities. The compound inequality is when we say x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 5. I love graphing these because you really only have to put two numbers on the graph. We're going to put 2 and we're going to put 5. If I'm saying x is greater than 2, I'm going to circle the 2. And it's greater than, not less than, or not greater than or equal to, so it stays an open circle. And then I'm going to circle the 5, and it's going to get filled in. The line for the 2 would go to the, and the line for the 5 would go to the, and that's it. It just goes in between the 2. X is greater than 2. So 2 doesn't count, but 2.1 would, right? And it's less than or equal to 5. So I could put 2.1, 3, 4, 5.0, 5. I meant to say 5.5, .5, but that wouldn't work because it's bigger. 5 counts. 5 would make x true. 2 would not because it's not an equal to. But anything in between them, including 5, makes it work. Do you see how this is compound? Yes. Just like putting two words together it's now one single line. This one makes the most sense to me. It's the ors that are weird. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay. We're going to start again with two singles. And then we're going to combine them down here and this is where it becomes a compound inequality. The first one, y is less than or equal to negative 2. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. It's less than or equal to, so do I fill it in or leave it open? Fill it in. And the line is going to go to the, the left. Yep. Second, y is greater than? Four. So I'm just going to put 0, 1, 2. It's only greater than, not greater than or equal to. So open circle. Yes. And line to the? Right. Okay, those are my two solos. You already know how to do that. Thumbs up if those two make sense to you because you've been graphing things like this already. The compound comes when we put those two graphs on the same number line. Oh. And we're going to say either y is less than or equal to negative 2 or y is greater than 1. Anybody want to guess what's going to happen with this graph? They're going to go in two different directions. That's the or. The and is when they come together. 
the ore is when they shoot off into different directions. Let's watch what happens when we graph it. I'm going to put the negative 2 here, and I'm going to put the positive 1. 0 would probably be about here. What's going to happen with my line? This is going to be the filled in circle going to the left. And this is the open circle going to the right. And they don't cross over. They don't join. That means that with this compound inequality, the only numbers that don't work is anything greater than negative 2 up to 1. Those things would not make this work. I could not say that y is less than or equal to 0, or that 0, I'm sorry, I couldn't put the 0 in for the y. 0 is less than or equal to negative 2. That doesn't make sense because 0 is greater than negative 2. All the numbers that are in this unlined space are the only numbers that don't make this work. Everything else works. Make sense? Yes. Do you see the relationship between compound words and compound inequalities? Yes. Putting two together. Let's open it up. I am going to give this to you as a task to do with a neighbor, and we will come back together in a few minutes and see how you've done with it. Okay? I gave you pens because sometimes I think it's easier to graph with a pen than like a pen or pencil because the colors on your lines. Just know with your foldable, it'll bleed through because you'll see it, right? Okay. Um, questions on how to start or should we do number? Let's do the first one together. Um, I am thinking of a number that is what? Greater than negative eight. And there's greater than negative eight. So let's just say x is greater than negative eight. And it's less than or equal to four. X is less than or equal to four. Can you graph those two things on your line? Yes. And you're going to decide if it's an and or an or by the kind of line we get. An and is going to be that line between them, and an or is going to be a shoots off into both directions. So let's graph it and find out. Let's put negative 8 down here, positive 4 here. I'm going to use orange. I'm not color coding. I'm just using something easier to see. Do I circle or fill in the circle for the negative 8? And which direction is its line going to go? Okay. And x is less than or equal to 4. So what kind of circle? Filled in. And the line goes to the? Okay. Is this an and or an or? Let's come back over here and put and in between this. Bless you. And here is how we would write the inequality. We're going to put the x in the middle. And what's going to be below it? Negative 8. But I've flipped this, haven't I? Yes. There's a reason I did. When it's an and, you want to only have to write the x one time, and it's going to go in the middle. So what's going to happen with this symbol? It has to flip. And... The 4 is going to be over here. Picture your written inequality should kind of look like your line on the graph. Negative 8 is all the way to the left. Positive 4 is all the way to the right. And everything that makes x true is in the middle. So the x is going to go in the middle. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. With an or, that's not what happens. You write the or in the middle. And you've got examples of them in 3, 6 in your book. So I'm going to let you guys try this now on your own with one, two, three, four, five, and then we can check it in a few minutes.